Hi, my name is Leonard Facchinetti, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to publish a package to Repack. And to show you this, I'm going to use an example of an effect, and we have been creating many effects here in this channel. And if you're interested in how to in learning how to develop effects, then you should check the other videos in this channel. So I have here a new effect for the demonstration of how to publish a package to Repack, and this is a very simple effect. It is just muting whatever signal is coming in. And the way it does that is looping through every channel and setting the sample to zero. Now, Repack is a way for people to get effects that you develop, but also re-scripts and any other kind of assets that you can use in Reaper, even things like color schemes and themes, you can distribute using Repack. I'm going to use here an example as an effect, but you can distribute all these other kinds of things as well. So we have the effect here, and now we are going to do the whole process of uh, setting it up for publication. And as you can see, the example here is working. The effect is working because we have some signal coming in and we have no signal going out. So the effect is good. Now it's time to publish so that other people can use it. The first thing you want to do is come here to Options and show Reaper Resource Path in Explorer Finder and find your effect in here. And this is where it is in my machine. Now, you probably want to keep your effects somewhere else for distribution. You probably don't want to keep the Repack repository in this folder here, in this folder that you use in Reaper. So instead, I have this other folder repack example, and I'm going to transfer the file there. So for a moment, the file will not be available in Reaper anymore, and I won't be able to use this effect in Reaper anymore, but I will install my own repack package. So I'll get this effect again via the repack package first to test, and also because I think it's nice not to have multiple copies of the effect. So that's why I'm moving it out. Now let's go to the folder where I just transferred the file to, and you can see that the file is here. And now we want to make this file available on the internet for anyone in the world to see. There are multiple ways to do this, and any way you can find to make this file available to the public will work. But the most common thing for people to do is to use GitHub to distribute these files. So I'm going to, uh, I'm using Visual Studio Code, by the way, I'm no longer in Reaper. So I'm going to initialize this repository and it's important not to mix up the idea of uh, a repository in Git that is for source control and a repository in Repack, which is a repository of assets, of effects, of packages really. So uh, effects and rescripts and so forth. They are both called repositories, but they are different things. So I'm going to initialize the repository and that is initializing the Git repository. And I'm going to add this file and I'm going to give this commit message something meaningful like a dot and commit. And now I'll come here to publish this to GitHub and I already have an account on GitHub and I already have the account set up here in Visual Studio Code. So I can come here to publish to public repository and Visual Studio Code is going to create this repository for me. Now, when I go to GitHub, I can go to github.com and I will see a new repository here. And the effect is already there. So it's already available to the public. Now I can click here on the name of the file. And then there is an important trick. We don't want to distribute this file uh, anytime we push changes to the file. So if we make some changes to the effect and we push the changes to the effect, we don't want people necessarily to automatically update. So I want to pin the version of this file to this point in time. And the way to do that in GitHub is to press on the keyboard, the letter Y, and you can see how the URL has changed. Now it's saying the name of this specific point in time. That's this combination of numbers here before it was saying master, and now it's saying this combination of numbers. And now I'm going to reload the page, and I can come here to the raw button, 
And I will have, as you can see on the bottom left of my screen, I have a link to this file in this specific point in time. And I can copy this link. And if I go to this link, then I will just get literally the contents of the file. And that's the intent. If you have some other way of making this file available this way so that you can just literally see the contents of the file this way, then you're good to go. You may have some server that you make this file available on. It doesn't matter. As long as the file is available on the internet for people to see, it will work. And then I'll come back here to my repository and I will create a file that is indicating where to find the files for my package. So this is like a manifest. This is this whole structure is similar to, if you are familiar with this, with RSS in general and podcasts in particular. So if you're familiar with this, if you have published a podcast before, it's a similar story. There is no central repack uh, place where you get all your effects, where you can find all the files. It is distributed. The way it works is you go to someone's page or maybe even you go to the listing that exists in the Repack website, but then you find the repository that you're interested in and they are going to give you this URL. And that's similar to when you go some, to some website and you see the URL for some RSS feed. The thing you do is you copy the URL and you paste it on your feed reader or on your podcast thing, the, the app you use to follow podcasts. Or you can think of this maybe as Apple Podcasts or Google Podcasts or Spotify. This just a listing of where to find all these um, XML files, these RSS feeds, so to speak. And then when you do this, when you find this, this XML file, and that's what we are going to paste into Reaper, this XML file indicates where to find all your packages. And following our analogy, that, that would be where to find all the episodes, all the MP3s for your podcast. So the distribution model of Repack is pretty smart because there is no central thing that you have to trust or that you have to um, manage. Anyone can create a new Repack repository, distribute a new URL, and Reaper will be happy to download the packages from there. So anyway, I have here the minimal XML file you need to make a repository available in Repack. That is the minimal one. And I'm just using here the fields that are absolutely required. And if you don't include these fields, then it won't work. But there are many more things you can include in this file to specify what changed from one version of the package to the next, to specify a description of your package, and to explain who the author of the package is and where to find them. Those information, it, it's always nice to have them, but they are not necessary, so I'm, I'm just including the minimal thing here. Let's go through this. It's an XML file, and the version always has to be one. The name is the name that of the repository as it will appear in Reaper. And then you are absolutely required to categorize your package. And there are different categ uh, categories that you can find here if you go to the effects that you installed in Repack. Otherwise, for instance, the Reteam JS effects, you will find these categories and you can create your own if it makes sense or you can use one of these. And I think that a mute effect is an utility effect. So that's why I am using the category utility. And then in the category, you can list as many packages as you want. And I have only one, but you can have different packages and they will be available for installation separately. The name of the package, you can name it whatever you want, but if your package is a single file, then it makes sense to name the package after the file. And there are different types of packages. Like I said, a rescript can be a package and a theme can be a package. In this case, the type of the package is an effect because it's a JS effect. And then you have to list different versions of the effect. And of course, when we start, there's only one version, version as I'm calling it 1.0.0. But as your script changes, then you will have to list different versions. And ideally, this number would be going up. And then users have the option to see all the versions, maybe even install previous versions. But definitely, you can list what changed from one version to the next if you want to use some extra fields here in this file. 
and then people will see the change log when they update in Reaper. So that's all nice and good. And in here, you have to list where to find the source for that file. And that's the thing we copied before. So now we can paste it here. And now I'll commit this file as well and push this file as well. And when I come back to GitHub and refresh, then we'll see the file coming up here. Now it's important to note that these raw files that we are using to distribute things sometimes take a little while to update. Sometimes they take like five minutes to, to be available and you just have to wait a while and refresh. So if you are doing this like I'm doing and testing right away, it may be the case that the file isn't ready yet and you have to wait a little while. So I will see if this is already working or if I have to wait. I clicked here and this time I do not want to do the thing I did before. I do want to leave this as master. I don't want to do, I don't want to press Y and then it becomes this specific point in time. Why is that? Because your index file that is listing all the packages, you want that to change and you want that to be seen by everyone who installed your package because that's how you say that there is a new version of a file or something. And this file ideally is append only. You are never modifying or deleting anything from it. You're always adding to it. So you're always adding a new version. And that's why it's safe to have this updating on everyone's machine. So I'll come back here and click again so I don't have that you weird URL. I have master here. And then I click here on raw. And the raw thing is already working. It's already published so to speak, and I didn't have to wait this time. So I can click here to copy this link. And this is the link that I would distribute to people. This is the link that I would put on my website so people could install my repository. Or I would come here to the Repack webpage. And if I think it's um, nice and, and good enough for other people to use, then I will say, to, uh, I will edit this list and include myself here with my uh, package or my repository and you can just edit this list and, and as soon as the maintainers of Repack accept then you will show up on this list here for discovery but even if you don't do that just you can just come to somewhere maybe your YouTube channel maybe your website and just distribute this URL that you get and people will be able to install this so now let's go through this process and install our own effect here in Reaper I'll come here to extension. First of all, I will scan for new plugins and I will delete this track. Because I moved the file before, I should not be able to see the mute effect and I am not able to see it here. But I can always come here to extensions and repack and import repositories, paste that URL I just got, make sure that it says master and that it's your repository, of course. And then I click OK and then I, I set up Repack so that when I install a new repository, it automatically installs every package in that repository. So it already installed our mute effect. And when I come back here, maybe I have to scan for plugins again, I'm not sure, but then it shows up here as the mute effect and I can use it now. I can edit just to check that the code is the same and it is. And then I can also come here to the Repack, uh, to the Reaper directory and I can see uh, somewhere in here, there will be the, yeah, the example repository with my utility folder and my effect in it. And that's all there is to it. That's how you can get a package from Reaper when you are developing it to Repack. And then you can install this, anyone can install this on the internet. And this package may be something that you developed or you may want to package someone else's code and this is something that I have done because I wanted to install all my Reaper stuff using Repack instead of having to go through the process of, oh, first you install SWS, then you install all these effects using Repack, but then there are these other effects that are not available in Repack, so you have to install them by hand. So what I did is I packaged them and made them easy to install using Repack. So the only thing I have to do when I set up a Reaper installation is I install Repack, and then I install all my repositories with all these distributions. And of course you have to check the license and you want to maybe contact the developers of these packages before you go ahead and package them and make them available on Repack. But I have here a package for SWS 
and that's the URL you can use to install it. And I also have these other effects that I like, but they are not available in Repack, so I package them and I just created files, these XML files. In some cases, I don't even have necessarily the source for the effect here. For instance, in this case here, I like this effect and it's available on GitHub, but it's not available on Repack. So instead of just, instead of copying the code to my repository, what I did instead is I went to their repository to the repository of the developer and I copied the URL that they have for that effect. So all I had to do was create this file, this XML, and I was able to install this and anyone is able to install this using Repack. Now, finally, before I leave this, I want to mention one more thing and that is in the description below, you're going to find the links to these files I'm showing here and they are the documentation for Repack. And in these files, you will be able to see all the fields you can include in this XML. As I said, there are more fields here that you could include and probably should to include descriptions and whatnot. And here you can find the description of every field and the values they can contain. And there is one more thing. If you have a repository set up in a certain way, then there is this tool created by the developers of Repack. It's called Repack Index. And you can install this and it will look at your repository and it will generate the XML file, the index file that we created by hand. It will create that for you. So if you are doing that often and you have complicated structures and you are maybe publishing a lot of effects and changing them fast, then you may want to install this. I don't do it myself. I create the XML files by hand, as you've seen. It's not that hard. There isn't a lot to it. But if you don't want, even want to do that, then you can try this tool instead. And you have to follow a certain way uh, when you're both developing the package to include the metadata in the JSFX file. But then this will do the job for you of creating that XML file. And of course, this repository is also available for you. So if you want to, you can come here to the repository we created in this video and just change these values, these placeholders like this and here and probably the category and then the URL. And you can do this by hand. It's not that hard. Anywhere you can host a file, you will be able to host your JS effect and make it available on Repack. That's all I have for you today. Thank you very much for watching. If you're interested in Reaper stuff, learning how to write JS effects, other kinds of programming, interesting things, and other kinds of Reaper related things like how to publish a package on Repack, then subscribe to this channel. Thank you very much for watching. I see you on the next one. Bye.